So this is uh, Proteus Design 3 from Moodle. So what we're going to do is, this is already connected to port B. So we're going to try to make LED blinking using the time delay. So in MPLive, what is the first thing? So let's say we want to actually make it blink. So the first thing that you need to do is, what are the things that you need to do? You need to configure the port. This is port, port D. So you want to configure it as output. So we write as 3D. And then what you want to initialize it first. Okay, if you want to set F, that means the initialization will be on first. Port D. And then here's where you want to call the delay. Right? So let's say we do the same delay. 100 millisecond. Then after that, If you want to make it blink, then you should clear F or D A. And then you can call the delay again, right? And here only you have branch, you can have repeat. And where should the repeat go? Set F. So I'm just doing this so I can give you an idea. So here the main program itself is a continuous loop looping. So you don't have to write the NOP branch NOP. So here is where you have your delay 100 millisecond. So you are going to move the literal value x. 33 and you're going to move it to timer 0 sorry, timer 0 to 5 and then we're going to move what is the value that we have just now AF you're going to move it to this is Timer zero low. And the high will be three C. This will be high. And then what you will be doing? Bit clear. This is in in con timer zero RF flag. Then bit test for this skip if set. So you are going to check whether this timer zero flag is it one or not. So if it's not one. A new branch, and we wait. Where should the wait go? Wait, and once it's done, it'll return. So, this is the main program. This is where you have your timer. Delay sub routine. Is that okay? Any question up to this point? So let's try to build this. Okay, succeeded. Let's try to go here and try to edit the properties. We'll change the frequency to what is the frequency it shows us now? 32 is it? No, 40. 
32. Is 32 megahertz? Now let's select the timer delay hex file under the advanced properties. Enable watchdog timer and we'll select this node. Let's see whether it's working or not. So it's blinking. So if you want it to blink longer, then what you do? You can use that product L multiplication. Is that okay? So I had fun with the simulation. So I knew it. The moment you all say, wow, <laughs> okay, you all never watch the video, never try. <laughs> So please do try your quiz is tomorrow night. Change color. Uh, then you have to put another, there is uh, LED which can change color. So anyway, so try that. Okay, before we go uh, to time of one, Before we go to the application, why I just showed that is I will share that as well, that code. But why I showed you is so that you understand where it's the same subroutine like how we did earlier, just that the content of the subroutine is the, the delay configuration, the timer configuration. So before we proceed in seeing how we can actually use uh, timer zero as intra application, let's very quickly look into timer one. Now take note that timer one is also same like timer zero. We can also configure it as six bit or eight bit. But take note, very important thing here is timer one is intended for 32 kilohertz frequency, very low. Anything in the range of megahertz, you can use timer 0 or timer 3. But timer 1 is intended for 32 kilohertz, kilo, not mega. So if you want, if you are having a frequency oscillation of 32 megahertz and if you're trying to use timer 1, you can never use timer 1. The calculation will not fit in. So for example, the same thing. Create a subroutine for time delay of 100 millisecond. But given frequency oscillation is 32 kilohertz. So whenever you see 32 kilohertz, you can actually use timer 1. So the same formula only we use. But take note here, for the prescaler for timer 1, that is this TCON, timer 1 condition register. But if you notice here, the prescale values are only from 1, 2, 4, 8. So you don't have much of a choice for prescale value. So you want to for eight. <coughs> so in this case, let's say if you use eight, which is the maximum, you'll get number of clock cycle is hundred. And because hundred is the only clock cycle value that you need, do you need to use it as sixteen bit? 8 bit is sufficient already, right? Because 8 bit can go from 0 until 255. So you should also find the starting value, right? So 255 minus 100. So here is 100. So you get this is the starting value. So the same thing you follow, but let's see the configuration of Tcon register. Let's see the first one is RD16. So we are using it as 8 bit or 16 bit. Here in this case we use 8 bit. So it is 0. This is don't care. 
there's nothing there so it's by default zero and then you have this two bits right so this two bits is the bit selector so you are selecting which bit 8 which is 1 1 are you following so for timer 1 if you're using timer 1 you have to take note of this and memorize this uh, the sequence of the prescale value 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 which is 1 2 4 8 and then you see timer 1 oscillator enable bit so we are using as timer so we are enabling the timer on oscillation bit so it should be one now and then you have this timer one sync and timer one clock source now this timer one sync depends on do you see this timer one clock source so if you look at timer one clock source select bit this one is instruction cycle clock you're using it as timer external clock you're using it as counter. So you're using it as a timer or counter? Timer. So this is zero. Now because this is, we are using it as a timer, the synchronization select bit, when it is zero, do you see that this bit is ignored? Because don't care. Because the, uh, the synchronization depends on the external clock. If you're using it as a uh, counter, so this one also will become zero. And lastly is timer one on is you want to enable it. So this will become one. So for timer one, this is always fixed. The front part only. Usually this one also most likely will be zero zero. Only this two number you need to find out. So the last here, what do you get? The entire thing hex 3 3 9 so and therefore you load hex 3 9 into timer 1 condition register and the same thing you load the starting value into timer 1 low and here the same concept also we want to clear the timer 1 flag but timer 1 doesn't belong in the core group interrupt interrupt sources right so it will be in PIR so therefore it is in PIR 1 so you have to clear and then the same thing you bit test you check whether when it becomes 1 and until it becomes 1 you wait so when it becomes 1 return so same the same structure of interrupt 0 any question for this point Have I already shared this note before? This timer? Integral? Okay. Any question up to this point? Yes. Still don't understand how we got high hex 3.9. The number bit that how we got you understood that 39 is just converting this 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. that's how you got 39 right you understood how we got each one of this that you understood so we just 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3 1, 0, 0, 1 is 9 so it's 3, 3 9 so we're loading it into timer 1 0 any other question? Mm -hmm.